Greetings friends and welcome to another fun and exciting build tutorial that has so many uses it hurts but this time we are going to be using it to build a Ouija, 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 Luigi, it's not one of those, spirit board, talking board, one of those things and it allows us to make this thing out of wood yes you can give me heck but it's actually the easiest wood project you probably ever do you need to make one cut of wood this here i buy this at home depot or home depot or whatever hardware store you want to go to but what you're going for is you get it in 48 inch lengths by 16 inches wide this is like a, a shelving material that they sell while you were there you can either cut this down yourself or you can ask them to cut it to 10 inch heights. If you want to do more than one, you can. You're probably gonna to have to buy the whole board because of what it is, but if you do, do do the whole thing, just get one cut to 10 if you only want one of these and save the rest of the wood for another project. So right off the bat, you're going to take this. Now, what we're doing here with this process, you want to make sure that you sand your surfaces. And not just that, after you sand your surfaces, Wipe them down to make sure all of the sawdust that you have from sanding is gone and off of it. If not, it's going to run into problems. Now, what I'm going to show you here is a really cool process I picked up on another YouTube channel. It was, the, the video's older. I'm going to link it down below and a special thanks to him because it really was a neat technique. I had to modify it slightly because... The way he did it just did not work for me. I could not get it to run properly. So right off the bat, what you're going to need is you're going to need some xylene. Now, this is kind of like a paint thinner. You can usually use it for paint thinning and cleaning and whatever. But we're going to use it to pull toner from a sheet and transfer it onto a piece of wood. Now, what I found with this stuff is there's an art form. I'm going to be including in that template file some practice pieces so when you print it out you'll have the practice pieces but major 100 percent this has to be laser printed not laser jet printed laser printed it has to be the plastic toner that we use if not none of this works and then what you're going to do is once you have it we're going to use the xylene to break it down from the back side and transfer it to the wood it's a really cool process I'm going to show you the way I do it wrong first, and then I'm going to show you how to do it right and the concentrations. So first of all, I'm using tissue, um, not tissue paper, well, I guess you can say tissue paper, but um, Kleenex. Uh, you can use something else that's similar to this. You're just looking for low absorbance, low absorbency, so it doesn't, it's not thick and it holds it like this material here is like a shop towel. It held too much of the xylene and it caused me problems. So what I'm going to do is I pour a little bit of the xylene into, I'm gonna move this off of the board so I don't wreck my good surface here. I pour a little bit of xylene into an old uh, can lid. You need it shallow because what you're gonna do is you're gonna take just the very tip of it and dip just the tiniest bit and you'll see how it gets wet and you can barely see it. I dab it on the table to see how much comes off and then I will rub it onto it. Now actually I'll do it on this one here first because you'll get an idea how to do it right and it dries off so quickly so you're going to have to come back. Don't be afraid of coming back to do it multiple times. You want it so when you push down you get almost none of that xylene off. Then using your hand hold it down and stroke vertically. See this is almost exactly where you want it, where you can see the xylene goes through and gets it where that's almost too much on the rag though you can see that makes the paper go transparent that's what you're looking for with a little bit of force pushing down it'll make the paper go transparent and you're just going to keep on rubbing it over then once you're done that side flip to the other side and once again push down you can actually hear the sound of the paper towel going and then what i do is i give it a good rub and you'll see here how there's not a lot of ghosting. It dries off very, very quickly, but you'll see there's not real ghosting. If you get too much, I'll show you on the next one what happens. If you get just the right amount, that's what you get. The transfer is absolutely brilliant and high detailed, and that is a plastic transfer. It can be stained, it can be done so much, but you can see just how good that transfer is onto the wood. 
Now I'm going to show you what happens if you do too much. And that's why you want to practice this and you'll get the right feeling down. So there is far too much and I'm going to put it on there. It makes the paper go real quick. Oh yeah, it goes fast. This is easy if you do it this way, but you'll see right away. See how the xylene is too dense and it's going through and it's causing the xylene to go through, get to the toner on the underside and cause it to bleed. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get the xylene just enough through the toner itself to cause it to release. Because now when we do this one, you'll pull it off and it'll look absolutely horrendous. There's an art form to just getting the right amount of material down. You'll practice and you'll get to a point, you'll know exactly what the wetness you need on this piece of paper towel is to elicit the best results. So that is pretty much the main part of what we're going to be doing here. And I'm going to initially, we're going to get the two sides on. I'll record it as I do, and you can see. Even if you get a little bit screwed up and you end up with a little bit of blurring, don't worry about it too much. If you get a ton, you can always sand it off and start over again. But you can see what happens when you get it right versus what happens when you get it wrong. So it takes a bit of practice to get to that point. But once you have it, you'll nail it every single time. Anyways, I'm going to get this wood laid out with the first pieces, and we're going to get them transferred. Now, you can see that, for the most part, that transferred beautifully. I had a little issue with the paper flicking up on me, but you know what? It's one of those things where you'll just get used to it, and you'll see on how beautifully that transfers to the wood. If you have spots like this, see how it doesn't completely go on? I love that. I love the way this looks like it's not perfect, like it's got some age to it and it wasn't just printed on there. It's something I can't replicate. I couldn't do this if I would burn this or anything. I love the, the way this turns out. It's so neat. Anyways, but you can see just on how quickly it goes down. I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna get the other side in. Now here, it's hot in my garage. Just so <laughs> if you look right here, these little bullet points, you don't have to get them absolutely perfectly transferred. We're using these for registration, where to put everything. When we're done, we're actually gonna sand those off. So it's just a matter of making sure we know where everything's gonna go. So I'm gonna go through and start putting on the other sides and I'll talk to you about how we do the central areas. Okay, see you in a bit. We got both sides on and you can see that make sure when you transfer these that you catch these six points of registration. We're going to need them later to make sure we get the rest of these pieces in the right spots. You can eyeball all this if you want, but I wouldn't suggest it because it can be a real pain in the butt. So anyways, I'm just, just like the other ones, I'm cutting it off to the black line and giving me a bit extra so I don't end up hitting the xylene onto the paper. Now, if you want to, the best way to do this is you can either Actually, we'll just do it this way. This is easiest. Take these bullets and chop a little bit of an angle out of each one so you get the halfway mark on both. It doesn't have to be like absolutely like ridiculously perfect because you're allowed to have a bit of misregistration. Now you're going to take this up and you're going to see that even with me putting this on, I'm not perfect, so I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here. I'm going to put the black line against the edge. I'm going to split the difference if I have it the right way. I'm going to split the difference so I see half of those bullets each as even as possible. Put the paper down, grab your rag, and we do the same thing again. Oh, just one thing. When you are doing this, try to pull away from your hand. If not, you have a chance of wrinkling the paper. So I usually start at one end and move over. And you can see that I'm pushing pretty hard because I don't want too much of that xylene onto the rag. So I'm kind of forcing it out of the grain of the paper towel when I'm doing this. 
So you might hear me working a bit at it because it's the best way to go. Okay, once you've got it on, check your work, done. And just like that, you've got the second or the third part finished. Now we're gonna go through. This is the harder one because what we're going to do is you're going to pick a spot that you're comfortable, like this one here has got the full farewell on it, which means I think I'm gonna keep that on there. And I've got to the VII. So if I go from here on this one, cut up, we're going to cut off the VII. We're gonna come over and we will get rid of the U and the T and we will end at the I, just like that. So now, check your work, make sure that they're all together there. This one, once again, take your, uh, did I cut off my registration? I just never had it on there. I just think I cut off my registration. Oops, well, we're gonna make it work anyways. We've got the bottom one here, and that's the most important one. Or, you know what, maybe I never even put the registration on there, on this print. So when you see this, that will be fixed because I think I just pulled it by accident when I was moving the file across. So we've got the one registration here. We're going to go through, we're gonna clip it out again. And see this one here, uh, we're gonna go because we don't have the second registration. This makes my life a little bit harder. So we're gonna take you down there. We know that that right there is the edge. That is the registration. You can look through and everything looks like it belongs where it belongs. So I'm gonna keep on going. Now, make sure you don't have a little tiny piece of paper sitting underneath your working area because uh, I, I, you'll see on the video when I'm doing it, you'll see that there's a piece of paper and you can see the shadows of it there. And a matter of, it, you really have to push down hard to hold this piece of paper because if it wiggles, it's very hard to register it back to where it's supposed to be. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the flip side and We'll take it from there. just like that <laughs> your board is done i think that this is so freaking awesome now uh yeah like imagine trying to paint this or do this in any other way because the final result just looks so authentic because i guess it kind of is I'm looking for a small piece of sandpaper here now there we go so once we're all done we're just gonna take a small bit of sandpaper and we're just going to negotiate these bullet points off. And if you don't get them completely off because it's being stubborn, when we go to do the weathering on this, we'll just put a little bit extra right there to hide it. But no, these are coming off beautifully. There we go. This removes our registration points. They've done their job. Everything is exactly where it's supposed to be. Now, wait for this thing to completely dry and you'll see that the end result it looks so good. I got a little tiny bit of blurring here where I went too much, but it's minor, all said and done. The detail is just stellar. Like, look at the eyeball. You can actually see the iris is on. Like, it is such an awesome technique i love it i'm going to be using it a ton going forward because it is just so useful now i'm going to be putting on a stain on top of it 
And the good news is, is this stain will not pull off your lettering because of what it is. This is a nice, oh, there it is. I'm looking for the name on the stupid stain. This is golden oak, made by Minwax. It's similar to a bottle like this one here, except instead of this one, it'll say, you know, <laughs> golden oak. And you'll see that you can stain this with zero repercussions and zero worry of it pulling up your stain, up your toner, because that toner is as much a part of the wood now as the wood itself. And it just looks so good. Now, don't be stupid with it, of course, because if you rub it like crazy, there's a chance you're going to cause problems. So what I usually do is I go very liberal with my stain, put it on, and then as it dries, it just looks so cool. Now, as your stain is almost finished drying, mine is almost done, I'm going to go through with a little bit of raw umber and we're going to dirty up just some random areas here or there, like I mentioned earlier, just because I like to just add that little bit. So hopefully this is in camera. Yes, it is. And I'm just using a dry brushing technique to add a little bit of extra age to the areas that I think would be seeing more age. You can add a ton depending on your situation and what you want to do with it. But you know, it's up to you. All right. Enjoy me aging on this thing up. And just like that, a little bit of age goes a long way to making it just not look absolutely perfect. Now the final step is you're going to be putting on a finish. I'm walking halfway across my garage to get it because I didn't bring it over with me. Now this final stage you can do with the Verithane, but I have been using this Rust-Oleum Satin Clear spray and it's been working fantastic to make it work properly and look good. So get that stain on. Uh, do the front and the back just to seal the whole piece of wood to make it look good and We'll be back to talk about the planchette The planchette is very similar to what we just did with the actual actually you actually saw me did Working on it at the beginning. This is I think three-eighths of an inch stock you can use three quarters just means your uh, planchette is a bit bigger and if you're just using it for display it doesn't really matter don't know what else you'd be using it for other than display so I had this stock lying around so thus I'm using it now you can you transfer from the template this exact plan include these lines because what that's going to do is it's going to give you what you need to use with either a scroll saw coping saw or band saw to cut that shape out and you'll see that you know if you have a coping saw it's actually not too bad to go through this stuff now once you've got this transferred and then cut all i did is i sanded the edges ever so slightly sanded the back i had a bit of a blowout with my uh forstner bit on that one and that's how you get the hole you'll see on there there is a little dot once that's transferred you use it to transfer the whole of your Forstner bit. You can just draw a half inch circle with a compass. What I'll do, I don't wanna, I'll include an extra page just with that circle on it. So if you cannot, if you don't have a Forstner bit, you can drill it and then you can use say a scroll saw or the coping saw to cut that hole out and get it all sanded. I'll give you options on how to get it through. Then once done, stain up the same way, spray, varnish and you get the same thing with a great looking planchette now this is where the project goes oh that's really cool what else can you do with it i saw this when i had it in my kitchen and i'm like you know what that is the coolest coaster ever so i built a set of four that's going to act like coasters for halloween and that type of season I think they look fantastic and they've got such a neat look. There's no doubt on what that is. So when you use it as a coaster, it really is a unique item that 
really turns out just so beautiful. Anyways, I'm going to get this all finished and we will talk about the final step, which is, you know, putting some felt on the back of this if you want it and everything like that. I'll see you in a few. All right, we are all finished. The planchette, I just put a few pieces of felt on the bottom to allow it to slide very easily. And you can see that the final finish on that wood is fantastic. And not just that, look at the detail that transposing of the toner leaves. Like it still completely catches me off guard just on how good that that system works. Regardless, thanks so much for hanging out with me on this fun little project. I'm going to be using this toner transfer method so much in the future it's going to hurt because it's so good for what I need it for. And this is such a quick and easy project. It looks authentic as heck. Well, technically it is authentic as heck, but it really turned out well. And I hope that if you build one that it'll add to your Halloween displays. A big thank you to my patrons, my subscribers, my viewers, everybody who comes and hangs out with me on my channel and enjoys this material and the things that I build because I love building them for you. Anyways, I will catch you on the next one and have a good one all.